Um, okay, we have uh, made this decision. He is good to go, and we're just going to check that it works technically right now, so bear with us. I've decided to dump the 8.30 news because he's a busy man. He's got the biggest city in New Zealand to run um, with, I think, a hostile bunch of, uh, of woke media and some publications chasing after him, and he's dealing with the, the aftermath of a flood. His name is Wayne Brown. He is the mayor of the super city of our largest city, um, and he's Mayor of Auckland, and he joins us now from what I... You can hear me, uh, Wayne? You got me loud and clear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. And, and we can you. hear you. I love technology. It looks like a lovely day up there. Uh, uh, that's your office, I'm presuming? Yeah, it's the office. So it's quite a nice view. Yeah. Looking outwards. And there are no bloody rain clouds. Let's get to that first, Wayne. Uh, geez, that was a dump. That was a dump of water, and I'm talking the the event before Gabriel. Then you had Gabriel. How is the city doing in terms of cleaning up and moving on from those uh, pretty uh, catastrophic weather events? Uh, well, I think it's doing quite well. We, the cleaning up went on pretty quickly. Uh, it was a widespread event, the 27th one. But whilst it was widespread, it only affected people in patches. So lots of people, it was just a wet evening, and most of them. But if you happen to be living on top of a cliff, which is probably unwise, they had some issues, a lot of issues. But the cleanup was mostly in valleys and a lot of floodplains that people didn't realise were floodplains. And so, and those people now are faced with um, sort of horror stories of deciding talking with your insurance insurers about whether they're going to be done or not done. Um, the insurance council, I've met with them, they do want to get on with things quickly, which is pretty good. So, uh, and in the middle of that, I've got to, the budget to sort out as well. So yeah. I'm All right. Sure. Hey, in terms then of the cleanup, in terms of the functionality of the city, that is pretty well restored now? Well, surprising it, that for the rain dump, the biggest rain dump we've ever had, which wasn't predicted by the Met Service, mm. um, they, uh, it, it, a small percentage of people got very badly from that, but yeah. the power stayed on virtually everywhere. Yeah, uh, and The city kind of functioned reasonably well through it. And if you happen to be in the CBD where I was, it was just a wet evening. Yeah, And so it was a, a you could be in one part and not realise that other people were in terrible trouble. Mm. Um, a lot of rumour floating around, uh, and look, I'm not going to be specific because the rumours haven't been specific, that sluice gates in some places weren't opened or dams were allowed to fill up. Have you seen any sign that the issue was exacerbated by poor management of the city's stormwater infrastructure or any part of its infrastructure? No, but there are, there are things which we've, we've learnt a lot from. I mean, we've had, um, I've, I've come with some simple stormwater fixes. Um, there was a lot of rubbish that oh, I'm, a, I'm a trustee of sea cleaners. That's my do good thing. And we get out with young people and we boats and we clean up all of, the, we take rubbish out of all the streams around Auckland, which the people who live on those streams put into the streams. Yeah. And um, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, drains got blocked by rubbish that people had thrown away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I went to, a lot of drains were blocked by plastic bottles, supermarket trolleys, tyres, yeah. and, uh, and, 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 and an amazing array of trash. And when people do that, they don't realise that they're actually impeding other people's chances of surviving without a flood. Yeah. And then in some other areas where we had open channels, uh, some other well-intentioned uh, green people were start found that planted trees in these channels to make it look nice. And, of course, they fell over and formed a slash dam, and that didn't help either. So um, just sort of well-intentioned stuff that went wrong. And then All there right. was in other cases where the, the roads got built up over drains instead of lowered over drains so that the, uh, when, the drain, when the drain filled, it went everywhere where it wasn't supposed to rather than over the road and into the next drain. Yeah. So there was some dumb stuff. Yeah, but no, there was nothing um, untoward. Yeah. Wayne, you say you're also working on the budget. As part of that, and given what we've seen post the severe weather events, 
Are you going to reprioritise the maintenance of city infrastructure in that budget or do you feel a need to? Well, the water supply and the sewage supplies and the, and the power and the roads all work pretty well. Mm -hmm. The stormwater, much more of an effort. But, um, and we've actually proposed in the middle of cutting the budget to meet a $295 million loss, which I inherited from the new um, commission, High Commissioner to <laughs> England. Yeah. Um, as well as that I'm, I'm proposing to spend an additional $20 million on maintenance of stormwater channels. Yeah. Uh, plus, uh, there's a certain amount of discussion with some of the public who seem to think that um, they don't have any responsibility for looking after the drain out in front of the house either, but they do actually. Yeah, yeah, and so you're saying people have got to look to their own resource as well, and I, I guess not throw yeah. rubbish in, in, in drains and in, in streams and stuff because, it, as you've said, it does have consequences. Um, it does a, have consequences. Yeah. It just does bad. It jams things up. Yeah. Give us an overview then of this budget process, and I guess because, I'll be honest, Wayne, I get most of the impressions of what's happening in Auckland from journalists there and I don't know that they're always telling me the truth about you they seem to have a little bit of their bee in, a bee in their bonnet these so called drongos so I'm always not quite too sure what's happening in Auckland because I'm getting it through the Herald well you can I'll tell you what I know and then you can decide yep um, what do you what is then the focus for this budget round and what goes as you try and keep rents and, uh, rates increases reasonable, what's the refocus under Wayne Brown that wasn't there under under Phil Goff? Right. Well, I stood fairly on a fairly clear platform of five things: stopping wasting money. Yep. Um, and and uh, four other things, none of which were going to cost anything. Yeah. And I did compete against um, some very Herald supported candidates who wanted free. Buses on top of that, so instead of a two hundred and ninety-five million dollar hole, we'd be looking at a six hundred million dollar hole if I hadn't won. Um, so that saved a bit. Uh, I was I, I knew there was a lot to fix, but I didn't realise the finances were in such a bad shape. I think it largely came from the fact that during all those last few years, where Auckland has got richer and richer, and New Zealand's got because the house prices went up by half a million dollars, we didn't actually increase the rates by much at all. When people were feeling well off. And now when house prices are reversing and going down, mortgage mm. rates have shot up like a lip yeah. uh, and the cost of living are under pressure. Now I'm forced to put th things up again. So that's come up and, and this is not a good time for, to load people with more costs. They should have been loaded when they were well off. Yeah. And so that's forced us into a bit of a dark corner. Um, and we, it means that things which we own, which have never paid a dividend like an airport, um, shares, we've got to flog them. And I still have trouble explaining that to some people who are otherwise moderately intelligent, that um, the idea of borrowing to buy some shares that don't give you a return is actually a stupid idea. Yeah, and people but, um, people use the term, when don't the family silver. Well, if all the family silver does is cost you money, it's not worth having, is it? Well, this is not family silver. This is the family um, garbage, and I want to take it out. Um it makes no sense. And then when you ask the people who uh, and who don't want to sell the shares, you say, have you bought any yourself? You find that they haven't. And so that they, they, they're not prepared to use their own money to do it, but they don't realise that in the last three years, we've got nothing back from that airport and we paid $280 million of interest on the loan to own it. Yeah. Now, that's just seemingly no obviously sense. stupid. Yeah. But... Um, not everybody gets it, so um, there you go. Yeah. And then there are other mixture of things we're trying to do. I want to cut some costs inside the council, and uh, particularly the CCOs, because I did want to get back control of the CCOs, was one of my Council-controlled organisations, <laughs> which are kind of, I don't know, they're almost like commercial transvestites, aren't they? You're not quite too sure what they are or what they're about. Well, they're not particularly commercial. Um, the, they're, the, they're where the in, massive increase in costs in the council have been. The council, council's costs over the last 10 years of the actual core have only risen by about 10% more than inflation. 
with the cost of owning the um, CCOs, water care, ca um, a Auckland Transport, uh, Auckland Unlimited, and Iki Panuku, they've risen by about 98% above the cost of inflation. And so they've bloated themselves out and they don't return much. In fact, the port, um, with all that $6 billion worth of land, only makes as much money as a pack and save. Um, so that's got to be changed as well. Yeah. All right, this sounds like big work. This sounds like fundamentally quite deep, and I'll be honest, not sexy to a journalist perhaps work, um, but it is what you promised to do, no, Wayne. Not, it is what you campaigned on, um, that you would do this. How much it support is. do you have from your from your councillors and from your fellow council for this, or are, are you battling to get this done? I think I've got enough support. Uh, it takes some explanation. People haven't really had to think about the numbers for a long time, um, but they are being forced to think about them. I mean, we did have at one stage in, when I got the first round, you have to go through several rounds of improve, improvements, uh, approvals rather, to get this budget across the line, which is interesting because the government, when, they, when the Minister of Finance issues a budget. He doesn't even tell the members of his party what's going to be in it, but I've got to go out and explain it and ask everybody what their opinion is. And one thing, Auckland's not short of his opinions, but, but a lot of the opinions are, aren't based on reading the numbers. Yeah. And in fact, I've had one count who didn't like the budget because it was made of numbers and money. And I don't know what budgets are supposed to be made of in that. And that person should have been mocked, but I got mocked for actually proposing a tough budget. Yeah. Budget. Um, look, you, you also recently you've done something I think that everyone wants to do, and I've done a couple of times in my life, and that's tell a spin-off journalist to F off. Um, you are doing this too, it seems to me, Wayne, in a hostile media environment. Well, it's, it, I suppose it's possible. They're probably hostile because, A, I hadn't heard of the spin-off when the guy came to me. Um, and and um, I thought he was an artist. Um, and secondly... Not that there's um, anything wrong with that, way with being an artist, is there? No, no, there's not. But um, I, I didn't think that he was... He was a very pugilistic artist, that fellow. Yeah. Um, but uh, I suppose... They've got to sell papers, and and the media is not a great focus of mine, actually. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm focused on fixing Auckland for the ratepayers. The ratepayers are a focus of mine. They seem to quite like me. And um, if, if, if the journalists are taking time to get the hang of me, the, it requires that the journalists actually start to understand numbers, um, not personalities, and that's a challenge for them. Yeah. Look, I mean, I've actually... Big things in Auckland before the hospital and the power power supply twice, and then none of those things are sexy. But the people work out that they're quite important. When you when you don't have um, power or when the or when the stormwater is not working, people suddenly aren't that fussed about the arts. Yeah, that's right. And, and look, that's the other thing. The arts are a focus. You say maybe the council spending too much money on that stuff. I mean, the Auckland Festival is underway this week and a racist poem's going to be uh, performed at Q Theatre on, on Thursday night that encourages people to go around stabbing white people. Um, and and there's, I know there's council money in that uh, performance. Uh, do you think the arts, you know, how much do you want to cut the arts budget from? I mean, some might argue that art should survive on oh, its own no, merits. No, oh, they're not, they're not. They're not a particular focus at all. It's just everybody has to share. Yep. Now, I haven't particularly picked on the arts. In fact, I quite like the art gallery. The art gallery is making a better effort at being commercial than the museum has, to be honest. Um, but I'm not picking on them. It's just that everybody has to get a haircut. Uh, otherwise, you're just picking on one thing. And so if I'm going to shave $295 million out because the last guy threw it away, and an interesting thing to note is that when the council are throwing money at things, it's the council's budget. But when um, someone has forced to fix it up and pay it all back again, it's the mayor's budget. Yeah. Um, and so the 
budget is the one that's going to be fixing. You know, it just means that everyone's going to have a haircut. There's complaints from about people from in the in the local boards. They think that they should be excused from it. But no, I'm just saying if everyone has a small haircut, we'll get there rather than having to hammer the hell out having of Having to shave someone's hair off completely and, and make them go bald, yeah. It's true. Yeah. Wayne, um, the other thing is that Auckland on a whole lot of levels interacts, and I'm thinking particularly about transport uh, policy, things like light rail, national eroding strategies, even, I guess, in some ways the port. You interact an awful lot with Wellington. You are the city that is most, I mean, in terms even of political power, economic power, um, you've got to have a relationship with Wellington. Now, Phil Goff used to be called the Minister for Auckland because his tri- ties with the Labour government at the time were so close, were so intricate. Um, amazed he didn't end up running the Health Department or ACC. Um, how is the relationship with... <laughs> how is the relationship with Wellington going? Well, I don't uh, go to Wellington, so I don't have a relationship with the town, but I have a good relationship with the senior politicians. Yeah, and I've met the prime minister and uh, the current one, and he seems a pretty reasonable bloke. And I'm working with the minister of transport, and he's agreed that we will have a joint up. Because one of the things that amazed me was there is no actual open transport plan. There's plans for bicycles, there's plans for um, buses, there's plans for ferries, but there's nothing tied up in the, in the forgotten freight, which is a big important thing to be carting around a city. Yeah, and so. We've agreed to do an, a, a joint thing, and that may well challenge some of the um, uh, things like the um, – it'll, it'll certainly challenge the need for a new harbour crossing, and it'll probably challenge the light rail thing. We do have the Auckland City Rail Link project, which is about 60% finished, and that will be a good project and will make a difference, but we should get that finished and have a look at what it does before we launch into new things. and. The only thing's wrong with the city rail link was that the way they signed up the contract was fairly dumb, mm. um, and, uh, and so it's going to cost a lot more. But it is actually a valuable project, mm. and it, and it will actually make a difference. But I'm I remain unconvinced about the light rail thing there. That's more of a housing project, and right at the moment, the population of Auckland is shrinking um, rather than rising. And where I want to intensify. The, the population is uh, behind me and the, when you look through the w- window there, 40% of those office buildings are empty. And that's an opportunity to get more people to live in the city as, as long as the government will change some of the rather dumb building rules we have in New Zealand, especially the fire rules, which are not designed to save the lives. They're, they're designed to prevent useful building, as far as I can see. Yeah. And so I want to have people in the city and that livens Queen Street up again, fills the shops, and those people don't need a bus and they don't need um, we Light new rail infrastructure. Cause or a bicycle way. <laughs> yeah. Or a cycle way. They, yeah. they, it's, all, it's all here. And the places which I think we shouldn't have are places like a Drury, which was never in the council's district scheme, but and the developers out there, Fletcher's and some Chinese group, um, don't want to pay their share of the um, development costs. And they're saying, you know, if we don't, if we have to pay for all those things, you know, we won't go ahead. And I'm saying, well, and your point is. Um, so there are better things to do with, with Auckland, and that means intensifying it right in the city, not out along roads yeah. Um, like yeah. on the way in, all of which flood, actually. Yeah. Look, the other thing, um, Wayne, and once again, I tell you my impression of Auckland I have to get from media, from social media. I go up there maybe once a month for business. I also get the impression that an awful lot of senior people in outfits like AT and other uh, COCs have resigned. For some reason, you're losing people. Is that because they don't have any faith in you or are you coming for them and saying the gravy train's over? Well, I don't think enough have resigned, actually. Where did you get the idea a lot have resigned? Oh, um, uh, I, I had on, the, imp- the general impression that it was like lemmings leaping off a cliff. Um, do you want to get rid of oh, more no, of them, no. m- more of middle management and managers uh, of CICs? Well, and, well, and some of the board members are hanging on like the barnacles under my boat, mate. Um, 
All right, so you say there's still a need for, if you like, renewal, cultural renewal inside management of the city. That is interesting. How do you get encourage people? How do you encourage barnacles to get off the bottom of the boat without just water blasting them? Putting it up on the hard and water blasting it or getting a chisel, Wayne? Uh, well, what I'm concentrating on is getting better results out of the organisations. That's the main thing. I'm here for the ratepayers of Orca, not for the, yeah. not for anybody else, not for the media, yeah. not for anything else. And to get better results out of the um, AT, we've given them a change in direction. And to be fair, some of them have moved off that there. I want to severely change the direction of the port, but there hasn't been enough movement at the board level there yet for me. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I campaigned on making this the council-controlled organisations for perform in a much more professional, uh, commercial, profitable and customer-focused way. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ratepayers are at the heart of what I want to rescue for Auckland, OK? Yeah, yeah. You're getting much time for tennis, Wayne, or are you spending too much time with drongos like me, mate? <laughs> I won't characterise... Uh, the state of people's um, whatever, but I did get a nice day surfing in on the weekend, which is really good after. Uh, of course, during the flood and the aftermath, the right thing to do, was, which I was quite happy to do, was be out there with the building inspectors and the um, student volunteer army picking up rubbish and, and, and actually finding out on the ground what's happened because I'm determined we don't end up doing the same thing again. Yeah. We tend to have a... In New Zealand, we fix the same puncture endlessly and then without finding out why the tyre went flat. And uh, so I'm talking to the Insurance Council about a whole lot of lessons we can learn from the flooding. Yeah. You know, why, why did people build on cliffs foolishly? Why did it, poorer people end up in, in valleys which were floodable? Yeah. Are uh, you still and, playing... And what I really want to get, are you still playing tennis with the guy who leaked the, the message, the WhatsApp message? I've never actually played tennis with that guy. That guy, I'd never met him. He somehow or other got onto my, onto our tennis group, and none, none of my group are playing with him either. He was actually a Herald reporter um, oh, who did that. That's a bit and dirty. So, um, well, it was it was the way it is, and but um, he's been sent to Coventry. Okay, and, by, and by the ten Auckland tennis <laughs> social tennis community. Hey, Wade, look, I have well, loved well, talking to you. And I didn't quite know what to get. We met once and had a beer down at Leo's place. But, boy, the, 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 I'm just interested in your thoughts on this. You are not sitting there, and I'll put it bluntly, brown-nosing the Auckland media. Uh, they didn't clearly didn't want you. The Auckland media elite like David Fisher and Simon Wilson did not want you elected because they are politically bent and they were backing Afiso Collins. And I look at other mainstream media, the media like collectively have decided that you're not cool and you don't play their game. And they seem to have been coming for you. Um, and you seem to be a person who really doesn't give a stuff about that. Well, I'm not here for them. I'm here for the ratepayers and I'm determined to fix Auckland. And that was what I was elected for. Mm. And they'll just have to learn that um, this is how you go about it. Uh, so I've you're not worried that they are painting a picture of you as slightly mad, foul-mouthed, incompetent, because that's what they're doing. They're doing a character assassination job on you. And I wonder if you think that maybe they can't do that because no-one trusts them anymore. I, I mean, most people would be... Most mayors and politicians I know would be dreadfully concerned about the way you've been portrayed in mainstream media in the last uh, month or two. But you don't seem to be. Well, the, the, the people on the street really like me. And um, the ratepayers know that I'm there to look after their budgets. And so I'm not, it doesn't really bother me, to be quite honest. Um, oh, they've got me for three years, so you might as well. You, yeah. There was some nonsense about resignations or whether someone had confidence in me. Jeez, you've just won a yeah. Had confidence in me. A hundred. Nobody in New Zealand has had more votes than me. 
Yeah. No politician in Washington will get anywhere near like 180,000 votes. So they got me for three years, so get used to it. Yeah. Now, this is this is interesting, Wayne, because you're also... Um, you're also behaving as a one-term guy. Damn the torpedoes, I'm going to get everything I can done in the years I've been elected for. But I look at your programme of work and, if you like, the philosophy by what you're trying to do, turn the city around, change a whole lot of things, that may well take longer than three years. So is Wayne Brown going to stand again if the job isn't finished? Well, that's not a question I'll be thinking about for another two. Right. Um, if you recall, um, whether it was liked or not, uh, Roger Douglas changed New Zealand in three years. Yeah. I've only got a third of New Zealand, so that's pretty easy in relationship. Yeah. Okay. Um, look, I think, I actually think, Wayne, a lot of New Zealanders find your approach bloody repre uh, refreshing because I think we've had enough of spin doctors and spin and PR campaigns all sizzle, uh, no sausage. Um, it's become apparent, though, even to us interacting with you to get this interview set up, that there is a requirement to have some sort of team around you of, of professionals. And I imagine someone like you needs specific people who really get what you're doing. Are you confident that you have that staff to, to get you as efficient as you can be in this role yet? We're still building that team, but the people that I've got have been selected carefully. Um, again, if you're going to do something that's big and complex, uh, rush decisions don't work. You know, people want to know the next day how you're going to do something or other. And I mean, big complex problems take thoughtful action over a period of time, but that doesn't mean to say you dither around and don't make progress. You have to come to grips with what it is that you're doing. You have to sort out the... Th there's always some things you can do straight away. And that's what I was talking through with the Insurance Council who are keen to make as much progress of sorting things out as they can. And there are some, they're trying to get things into three baskets. The ones that are completely wrecked and just pay them out. The ones that are easy to fix and you can get them fixed straight away. And then there's another group which take a bit of time to think what is the right thing to do for these people and these proposals. And it's the same with all the decisions I'm facing. Yeah. There are some things you get on with, there are some things you kill off, and there are some things you have to think about and get right. And I'm prepared to do the thinking. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, look, here's typical kind of reaction in the world you live in, and I'm so refreshed to hear that you don't really give us stuff, but I'll give you a chance to respond to this, of course, anonymous text I've got. Great to hear Wayne Brown's gotten a good day surfing on a Tuesday instead of working for the city. What a slacker. And it doesn't say Simon Wilson or David. I didn't David. say it was on a Tuesday. I didn't <laughs> say it was on a Tuesday. I did that over the weekend. What was that person doing over the weekend? We, yeah, probably okay. meth. Probably meth, probably. Wayne, to be honest. No, some, you, you need to improve the IQ of your listeners, mate. <laughs> well, look, a few things are happening that will do that, to be honest, collectively. Um, I've also got this, Wayne, through. Can Wayne Brown please stand in Hamilton in three years? So you might have... You might be able to take your brand of municipal management on the road uh, to various cities. I'll tell you what, I'd have you in Wellington at the drop of the hat. I'd be quite happy to swap Tory Farnell for you in Wellington. Any idea? Well, that's not going to happen. Oh, it's an offer. The offer's on the table, Wayne, I'm telling you. Um, uh, look, do you think it's been a bumpy start? Do you think there's a bit of correction to go or is it just getting on with it? Oh, I think the main thing is to getting on with it. I mean, I didn't plan on uh, on the storm, the unannounced storm arriving, and I didn't plan on uh, us being not as well prepared for that as we should have been. Uh, I didn't plan on there being $295 million in the poo when I got there either. Yeah. Uh, but the main still things of improving Auckland transport improving the returns from the port, um, sp speeding up the way we get around the town, modernising the, the transport system without spending a lot of money, doing things cheaper and mm. um, better, faster. We we have cycleways here that cost $12,000 a metre. Yeah. Up north we did them for $300. Yeah. 
a meter. So I'm looking forward to a whole lot of positive things that we can do. But a lot of it is just doing things better, faster, and cheaper. Yeah. And somehow or other, we councils manage to do things at and and, and twice the time. Twice, at, the, twice, at the, twice the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's and, such a truism. Um, it is such a truism. And hey. so I just want to bring it back and do things the way that I'm used to doing things. Yeah. Hey, Wayne, I want to thank you for taking the time of, out of what I know is a busy schedule um, to talk w with everyone on the platform, and I'm sure this is going to be hugely watched. Um, and as a drongo, I haven't found you offensive or difficult. You haven't dodged a single bloody question I've asked you. You've been straight up and you've been yourself, so I don't know what the Herald and the spin-off are on about, and you certainly haven't told me to F off. I would like to make you an offer. I'd like to do something much shorter like this once a month on a Wednesday, if you've got time. Yeah, OK. I Let's have a that. talk about that. I'd really like to have Wednesday chats with you, Wayne, because you're an important political person, you've got an important job. I'm going to let you get back to fixing our bigger city and say thank you very much uh, for being with us today. OK, thanks, mate. Cheers. That is uh, the Mayor of the Super City, Auckland, Wayne Brown. Wasn't that fascinating? You know how much time he gave us? That was over half an hour of discussion. Um, he didn't tell me to piss off, F off, didn't call me a drongo, answered every question I asked him, and I really want to get, if you're in Auckland, what did you think of Wayne Brown? Um, is he what the mainstream media have painted him to be or not? Um, and I'm getting some, I would say, oh, generally positive feedback about this. What a refreshing interview with Wayne. Wayne for Mayor. <laughs>